Hello and blessings to all the YouTube friends. Thanks for stopping by again. Today I'm out on the Florida Trail with some scout equipment from 40 years ago. And periodically I dig into a crate that I unearthed at my dad's house a couple of months back and fish out some of the stuff that I hadn't seen or used in a long, long time and go out in the woods just to stir up recollections from back in those days. So um, let me turn this around. I'll show you one of the canvas pieces that we took on the Appalachian Trail and the setup that we used when we were too lazy to do anything else or set up a tent. I also took this one out on the Pacific Crest Trail and it worked really good for most of the section, especially in California through the Mojave, where sometimes we just needed shade in the daytime to get away from the sun back in 19... 70, 70 as well, long time. So let me pause this, I'll turn around and show you some cool old scout stuff. Okay, here it is. Uh, this was a eight by 10 tarp made out of waxed canvas. And we took this thing all over the place. Inside is a ground cloth and my old scout sleeping bag got as a Christmas present back in the late 60s. Get around the back of this thing. This is the lean-to setup. There are a million ways to set these things up. Um, typically we would come into camp and run a ridge line with some one inch uh, mule tape and uh, set it up as a lean-to into the wind. You have to really have some crazy rain to get wet in this thing. It's so big, little candle lantern. Uh, over here on the table are some of the tools that I used to haul around. This is a buck saw that uh, we made on a weekend outing. My frost Mora knife that my grandfather gave me as my first knife. His J. Russell American Cutlery knife from the mid 1800s. My old hickory mod. And this rock is one that I found in the river this morning and put some fixing wax on. Uh, fixing wax. Wow, it's in that tin. I should have opened it up. Rats. Uh, this hatchet is by uh, Bridgeport. I bought it, a pair of them, from the Ferris Brothers because they got the new plum hatchets that were way cooler back in those days. And I took this one. Originally it was painted green. The handles were red. In between there and uh, between the scales and the head of the hatchet it's painted yellow with a scout logo on it and my grandfather and I pulled the scales off when we pulled the scales off this Jerry Robeson and on the Robeson we used surfboard resin and linen to make our do-it-yourself micarta project and replace the scales uh, we pulled the scales off our old hickory knife that day sanded them epoxied them back on pulled the scales off this Hatchet, you don't really think of a hatchet having a full tang, uh, but this one does. And uh, the scales were kind of loose. These things were made back in the 30s. And uh, so we pulled the scales off, sanded them, epoxied them back on, stripped the metal down to bare stuff, got all the paint off of it, put a patina on it with vinegar uh, in a bath, dressed the edge, and now you can shave with it. This is my uh, OA Norland axe that uh, my grandfather gave me the previous year he'd given me a hatchet. The year previous to that he gave me my first knife and my first folder which was a Barlow knife and this one much to the chagrin of my grandmother and his wife and my mom and then added insult to injury by bringing me to the kitchen table to show me how to dress the edges in front of the women in our house so you could slice newsprint and shave with the things. This little can here is uh, fixing wax. Uh, God, I need to get the lid off of it. What fixing wax was is that uh, when we had had a goose for dinner, we would, you, you know how after you have the goose for dinner and then you put everything back in the refrigerator and pull it back out the next day, there's all the waxy fat that floats to the top of everything. We peel all that off. And, Put it in a pot. We used a coffee can. Uh, put some water in it, put, take it outside, put it on the stove, bring it to a low rolling boil, and the low rolling boil will 
take all the impurities out of the goose fat and they'll fall down to the bottom and what you have is snow white rendered goose fat. If you do it with bacon grease you have lard, if you do it with chicken grease I guess you have rendered chicken fat. I like the goose fat. For my grandfather and I we took it on the Appalachian Trail. We cooked with it. I guess you could eat it. Uh, this particular rendered goose fat has had a pinch or two of beeswax and a drop or two of vanilla and I pulled it out of a crate. It had been in there 40 years and it wasn't rancid. I don't think I would eat it or cook with it. Uh, Howsomever, it is some awesome stuff. Uh, here's a military surplus uh, compass, uh, marbles, match kit, scout magnifying glass, flint and steel kit, whistle, mirror, quintessential cooking utensils, cook kit, uh, some fat wood. This is a, this brass thing, is a Lee and Enfield oiler with a spoon cut off. And tucked inside is a bunch of uh, manila hemp rope and some methyl alcohol spirits. So that you can pull off the top and light it and it will be a match for hours. And my stoves, uh, this little guy here, let me see if I can get closer to it, it's way cool. Uh, in the modern age, the analog to this thing would be the Esbit stove. This was the original Scout aluminum one. I have some aluminum foil underneath. That's a trioxane tablet. Uh, trioxane tablet burns with no flame and no smell. Super stealthy. It's a surplus item, and my grandpa and I got a case of it from the local outfitter back in the day so we could take it and use this on the Appalachian Trail as our main cooking deal. Uh, Cook potatoes on it, like so. Uh, similarly, this little brass thing here is a uh, military surplus Swedish stove, I think, by Trangia, and it goes underneath this canteen arrangement here and uses alcohol spirits. This is one I found. Uh, had one in high school had one in Scouts. It comes from Japan. The Handy Kemper's Stove. It uses uh, Coleman White gas. It supposedly will use unleaded gasoline and the literature says that you can use alcohol. Don't ever, ever use alcohol in this thing. It, it blooms and gasifies so crazy that it will light you up. Uh, haven't had one explode but they get away from me really really fast so I have only ever after my first disaster used Coleman white gas in it and uh, I loaned one out to a friend of mine a couple of years ago and he never bought it back and so in a one of those if you've ever gone to St. Augustine they have some antique slash junk stores down on Anastasia Island and in one of them I found this thing in its box for five bucks and I was so stoked to have one back and I will never loan it out again. Uh, this stove here is the first Coleman stove that they said was dual fuel, would use unleaded gas and their white gas. Uh, I tried unleaded gas because it was cheaper than white gas. Still is. And what's a gallon of uh, Coleman fuel now? 10 or 11 bucks? Uh, what's a gallon of unleaded? A couple of bucks. Uh, when we put unleaded through this, the generator that delivers the gas and comes to a flame, gets so crudded up that we'd have to replace it and it's hard to clean and a pain in the neck. So I have only ever used white gas in this one and this one uh, was my grandfather's from the mid 50s or something and it went in this metal can and is still way cool. Uh, let's see what else around here. Knives, uh, this is a buck saw. This is a old official scout issue hand saw and surprisingly, you know, it's pretty sharp, still works, and uh, does all those things. Uh, on the back over there looks like the other tent case, uh, army surplus haversack that I stuffed all this junk into. And uh, this is my stuffed rat, Edwina, who goes everywhere. And one of the projects we did as scouts was us boys were given a piece of canvas and some combination of boiled linseed oil, beeswax and I think some turpentine to make things dry and we made these oral cloth 
cover sack things to put tinder in. So these were the kind of things that we uh, had as Boy Scouts back in the day. It's fun still to take them out uh, in the modern age and use them. And I don't know at nearly 60 how many more years I have of dragging Scout stuff out and wanting to sleep on the ground. Um, but this was basically my setup back in the day. So I hope you enjoyed it. On another occasion, we'll take one of the other Boy Scout tents out and uh, maybe sometime tonight we'll use one of these stoves and the cook set and uh, cook a steak over the grill and cook some vegetables in the cook set. Thanks for stopping by.